Hello, my name is Matt Oswalt, and I'm here to talk to you today about the power of test-driven network automation. As you can see on the screen, you can reach me at Twitter at Mirden. You can also reach me on my blog at keepingitclassless.net. Before I get started, I have this disclaimer in here to make sure uh, that it's clear that what I'm presenting is a personal effort from me to the community. I do work as a software developer for my employer, but this presentation is not associated with those efforts. So let's talk about network automation as it stands today. I think this is this is a, a growing area. There's still a lot of work to do in this space, but it's definitely gotten a lot more attention over the past few years than uh, it has in the past. Uh, first off, we're seeing a lot of interesting dynamics in, in, in abstracting the data and the syntax of our network configurations. Let's say we're throwing a switch configuration together. We, we've, we've gotten a lot better uh, about understanding the value of placing the data of that configuration, things like VLANs, IP subnets, BGP configuration, all of that stuff can be in these uh, isolated uh, files that contain these, these variables. Typically we use YAML for that purpose. And then we combine that with the use of network configuration templates, such as those written in the language Jinja 2, uh, to dynamically create network configurations uh, based off of that data. And this, and this is especially powerful if we combine these ideas with a, a Git, Git uh, version control or, or something similar. So uh, th that's all very, very awesome. Uh, we also are, are uh, getting a lot better at using automation tools like Ansible that uh, push these changes to our network devices in an automated way uh, and perform some safety checks and things of that nature. Now, I don't want to diminish any of that, but what defines success? I mean, this is all very important. It's, it's, it's important to do, but, but what about any of what, we, what I've just described and, and then anything else in the network automation conversation helps us really understand that we've successfully made these changes. Uh, does does success really mean that we've pushed the configuration into the switch? I would argue that it's much more than that. Now, as an example, I think everybody's had that you know two a.m. change window where things go terribly wrong, and frankly, what terrifies me even more than that is the two a.m. change window that goes well because that tends to make me think that the that the glitch is more subtle than 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 what we might be able to detect at that time, uh, and frankly, won't surface until the next morning when users are in the building. And uh, that's, of course, a situation that nobody likes to be in. So that brings me to the concept of test-driven network automation. Now, first, I talk about continuous integration, which is the idea that we can make changes all the time because we built a pipeline that performs checks on each and every change that we make. You know, we can faithfully replicate real-world use cases in our unit tests and integration tests. Each change is subjected to these tests. And this buys us the confidence that our changes can happen at any time. Currently, continuous integration is largely a software development concept. We don't really have this kind of confidence with changes to network infrastructure. Now, I believe a large part of this is that we don't have the right tools to put our networks through the proper testing, or such tooling is cost prohibitive or a mixture of the two. You know, if we had this tooling, it would be great to be able to run this before and after each change, and it would help us understand the real impact of that change across our entire infrastructure. Lastly, the testing that we do end up doing needs to be more than just pinging a few IP addresses to make sure that we have basic reachability. Your users aren't pinging each other, they're using applications. So we need a type of testing in place that's able to mimic these interactions at any time of the day. Wouldn't it be nice if we could run a suite of integration tests against our network to verify that it's continuing to operate the way that we think it should? I sure do, and to that end, I'm pleased to announce a personal project of mine called TOD. TOD stands for Testing on Demand, Distributed. Now, I believe that proper network automation needs to fall within the context of a continuous integration pipeline, and that pipeline needs to have proper testing tools. Todd aims to provide just one way of getting more useful data into the hands of the, quote, network release engineer. By the way, Todd is written in Go, and I'm open sourcing this tool today under the Apache V2 license. So a brief high-level overview of Todd. Todd performs tests, and it gathers data from agents that are distributed throughout your infrastructure. The idea here is to mimic real-world traffic over your network infrastructure and gather statistics on that interaction. Now, this could be a load test, but it could also be a simple connectivity test. This totally depends on the application that you're testing with. The point is that you're running these tests from a bunch of different points around your infrastructure instead of just one. Second, highly extensible testing. I've devised a way for users to define their own applications within Todd. So I'll give a few examples of applications that are natively supported by Todd, but we'll also look into the mechanism that allows you to define your own. Third, uh, scale out. The power of these tests is closely tied to the number of agents that are present within your infrastructure. If you want more testing viewpoints, simply spin up more agents. 
And then finally, you can perform testing in an ad hoc uh, nature, or you can trend test over time. Now, the ad hoc testing is very useful for troubleshooting when you know there's a problem. However, the test metrics shown over time can definitely help indicate a problem in the first place. So let's dive into some use cases. The first use case that you can see here on the screen is ongoing monitoring for SaaS. You can keep your SaaS providers honest by monitoring them from multiple points around your infrastructure. In this case, in the diagram that you see here, we're running HTTP tests from multiple locations around our organization. And Todd can report metrics for things like page load times, transactions, and more. Again, this is all from multiple perspectives. In this diagram, you see we're doing the same test from both from our, H our headquarters, our data center, and then two of our branch offices. Another use case is network integration testing. I sort of coined this term a little earlier. I, again, believe that there's a use case to running a tool like this in the context of a continuous integration system. You could run these, quote, network integration tests before and after the changes that you make to a network. So for instance, some network engineers like to use tools like iPerf to test the available bandwidth between two points on the network. Well, what if you could run iPerf in a full mesh fashion, like what's shown on the screen? And you can do this periodically to see how the, this available bandwidth is changing over time. Finally, you don't have to be running Todd all the time. Sometimes you want to do something simple, but from many different perspectives. Todd can allow us to gather metrics on demand, which is really useful when you're troubleshooting a network problem. Now, let's talk about the high-level design of Todd. It's fairly straightforward and is composed of three components. You'll see a server there in the middle. You'll see some agents scattered there on the bottom. And then finally, a client, as well as any third-party utilities that are integrating with Todd there on the top. It's important to note that the server is the component that maintains communication with any outside databases. The agents communicate directly to the server only. Also, any third-party interactions, as well as uh, such as those with the databases you see there to the right, are built in a reasonably modular way. I wrote integrations for what I thought was useful, such as with etcd and influxdb, but I did so in a way that doesn't lock you into your, uh, my choices if you want to use something else. Let's dive into the Todd server itself. The first point I'd like to bring up is that it orchestrates test runs between groups of agents. It's not actually part of any test in terms of it being an endpoint. All tests are between agents and, uh, and the server is not a part of that. The server is really just an orchestration engine for the agents to run the tests. The server also manages agent registration and remediation. Agent re uh, registration is pretty straightforward. Basically, the agent pops up on the network and says, here I am, here's some information about me, here's some uh, facts about my operating environment, things like that. And remediation is uh, if you maybe add a new type of test that you want to run, the, agent, the server manages remediating that agent and providing that, that metadata to that agent so that the agent knows how to handle it. The Todd server also interacts with any databases. As mentioned before, agents communicate directly with the server so that the server is the, is the component that interacts with any databases such as etcd or influxdb. The Todd server manages the group topologies as well. Now we haven't talked about groups yet, but in short, groups are exactly how they sound. They are groups of agents. And the server uses these groups to uh, orchestrate tests at runtime. So the topology with those groups is, are, th that topology is managed by the server. And then finally, it provides an HTTP API to the Todd client as well as any third-party software integrating with Todd. Let's talk about Todd agents. Agents provide facts about their operating environment back to the server. As mentioned before, they pop up on the network and advertise themselves. Uh, they, they say information, things like, here's my host name. Here are the uh, network interfaces that I, am, that I have uh, as my environment, things of that nature. And it sends those back to the server. Uh, the Todd agent will also receive and execute test run instructions from the server. So when the server uh, orchestrates a test, it's going to ex send test run instructions to every single agent so the agents know what they need to do. And the, uh, the agents are able to locally uh, run those, those instructions and actually manifest that in an actual test run. And then finally, Todd agents come in a variety of form factors. Uh, it's really just a compiled binary, right? This is written in Go again, so as long as you compile the Todd agent for your target platform, it should work just fine. Just as an example, you could run this on a bare metal server, uh, or you could run this as a VM or a Docker container. In fact, there's a Docker file in the repo for you to do this quite easily. And uh, that, that Docker file is used to push the Todd uh, Docker container to Docker Hub. Um, so you can pull that from Docker Hub quite easily. You could also very easily uh, compile this for ARM, for instance, as a Raspberry Pi. Or if you really want to get fancy, you can compile this for your network switch vendor uh, if they are allowing you to do so. So again, this is just a compiled binary. So the form factor is almost uh, just you know sort of an, uh, irrelevant. You can make it however you want.
So I briefly mentioned grouping within the within Todd, so let's go ahead and define this and, and explain what that means. So it's worth mentioning that all tests are run using groups within Todd. So before you can run tests, you need to write rules that place agents into these groups. Now in the visual shown here, we have a few agents that have been placed in a blue group based on our rules like, for instance, IP, subnet, or hostname. Now when we run a test, what we do is we tell Todd that the source of this test is this blue group of agents. And we also pass in a list of targets, and these are typically IP addresses, as you can see there in, in purple. Now let's take one of these agents. There are four agents in our list, so this agent is going to spin up four parallel threads for running tests. These four tests will take place at the same time, and when they're finished, they will report their data back to the server in aggregate. However, all agents in the source group are also doing this simultaneously. So in short, all agents are testing all targets all at once. Now, this is great, and there are plenty of useful applications that can be run against a set of uncontrolled IP addresses as shown in the purple box below. But what if we could control those boxes too by deploying Todd agents to them? In this diagram, we are actually targeting another group of Todd agents. In this case, the Todd server will spin up some kind of process on the targets first, and then, once those are all running, the sources can run their test. Think about an example like iPerf, where a client and a server must be provisioned to order in order to run a test. Combine that with the full mesh testing capability shown here, and you have a very powerful way to produce a lot of network load from a bunch of points on your network. Another great example is HTTP testing with a client tool like curl. You may not have a proper web server you're willing to test against, so you could use this model to also spin up a bunch of web servers to test against. Finally, increasing the power of your tests, or maybe just providing more data points around your network, for instance, not all tests are load generating, is a simple matter of spinning up additional agents in each group. Imagine if you put Todd into something like Kubernetes. That particular example is really powerful because you can really easily scale out the power of your tests in that group of agents by using something like Kubernetes replication controllers. Finally, I'd like to talk about extensibility in Todd. This was one of the key design principles that I wanted to incorporate into Todd because I wanted to make sure that Todd was very easy to add certain test types to and, and add more applications to. And testlets are how Todd is able to be extended to support just about any application. In short, testlets are like a little wrapper for the actual application that lies underneath. What they do is they define a standard for input and a standard for output. As long as you support, as long as the testlet supports the input and the output required by Todd, you can do whatever you want in the testlet. Now, specifically, the input, as you can see here on the diagram, uh, is a set of parameters. This is in the documentation, but in short, basically, this is what am I targeting? What testlet is this running against? It could be an IP address, uh, could be could be something else, maybe an FQDN, as well as any arguments that you want to pass to the underlying application. And then the output is a JSON dictionary of the test metrics, things like you know the HTTP load times, uh, or if you're running a simple ping test, this will be something like the percentage of packets that were dropped, uh, or the the latency uh, for for the for a particular ICMP message. So basically, this is the standard input and the standard output for a testlet. It allows us to uh, take just about any application and and in and using the testlets, we can define these standard input and standard output and keep things consistent. Now, these testlets aren't necessarily written in Go. Uh, in theory, any language is supported. Uh, the testlet just needs to be ex exec uh, executable. As long as you print JSON to standard out, the Todd agent will be able to pick up that data, and then, of course, it will report that data back to the server so that you can get a report of all of the agents together. Now, there will be a set of default supported testlets distributed with Todd, but if you just want to define your own testlets, you can write them and put them in the testlet directory on the server, and the server will distribute them all to the agents. And with that, I'd like to say thank you for watching. I will be making another video that contains an actual working demo of Todd. Uh, so there should be an annotation on the YouTube video uh, right now where you can click and go to that video. Uh, if you'd like to see the code, you can go to the GitHub repository shown here on the screen, github.com slash mirrodin slash Todd. And then as mentioned before, you can always reach me at my blog, keepingclassless.net, or on Twitter as mirrodin. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope this is useful.